Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Seeing as it is uh, 6 30, um, I will call the meeting to order. And are there any adjustments to the agenda? All right. Priscilla has her hand. Oh, Priscilla, yeah, go ahead. Um, I just had one question. Are the MOU was supposed to be a special meeting a couple weeks ago. Are we adding that to the agenda or are we having to do a special meeting to cover that? Um, I was going to let, let um, I can add it as an adjust, adjustment. Um, our other meetings we've, we've held just kind of, um, <laughs> we've kept them kind of where they are just with the reorganization. Um, but I can, if we'd like to add that as an adjustment, we can and the new I can let the new board later. So. Um, I would kind of like to have it on here if the other members don't object, since um, it, this is the only board that doesn't. I do object, Priscilla, because this board has had ample opportunity to list it on this agenda if we intended to actually discuss it uh, by daylight. Um, yet we seem to be continuing to keep this one underground. I think it is highly improper for this board to add it as, a, a, as an item to this agenda when this, when this board has had almost a month to list it on this agenda, if that's what our intent was to do tonight. But my, my intention was to, to leave the reorgan just the reorganization tonight, but... Um, Priscilla? Yeah, but I don't think that any of the members were given the opportunity, honestly, to add agenda items because um, our superintendent left it at reorganization. David, that's the only reason, and, and I shouldn't be addressing you, David, but that's why the only, my understanding was that was the only reason it wasn't put on here. So that's why I brought it up. Um, then I, I would like to keep it to, um, just to the reorganization, and then we can make a decision um, of how to address it um, moving forward um, and to get it uh, added on as a new item. So. Um, communications from the public? Don't see any. Um, then I guess we will move to... Uh, 4A, which is the election of a chairperson, and I will entertain nominations. Mr. Terry. Hand up first. Oh, sorry. I nominate Molly Bannock for the chairperson. I'll second that. Any other nominations? All right. Then I will consider nominations closed and go for a vote on nominations. And I'll start with the screen, just as I see them up at the top. Well, here we got Brenda Farkas. So let me just get her in here, please. And if I can just bring Brenda up to speed once she gets on. Hi, Brenda. We are we are at um, we're at four A. We're at the election of a chairperson. I have um, one nomination for Molly with a second. Um, and just because you jumped on right at that moment, I just didn't know if I give you an offer. We did close nominations, but you jumped on, so um, I didn't know if you had a nomination. No, I, I would actually like to vote on that. So okay, so uh, we're going to start just as they are on the screen. I'll start with Priscilla. Uh, yes. Why are we why are we voting with just one nomination? And we can't we vote to close the nominees and you cast one vote. Okay, then I will cast one vote for Molly. Molly is so inclined to accept. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, then being nominated, I pass the baton to you and the floor is yours. Okay, so 
We need a nomination. Uh, we need the nomination for um, vice chair of the board. I move Jason Terry for vice chair of the Union High School Board. David Clark. I second. James Streeter. Any other nominations? Madam Chair, I move nominations be closed and direct the chair to cast one ballot for Jason Terry as vice chair. Jason, Terry, Jason Terry is vice chair. Thank you. Clerk. We have a nomination for clerk for someone interested in that. I've done it before and I'd be willing, but if someone else wants it, by all means go with someone else. I'm just looking to see if there was anyone else. Do you have a child graduating this year? I do. If you are the clerk, you're going to sign the diplomas. Do you interested in that? What else does the clerk do other Not than much. sign the diploma? Not much. <laughs> so, so ultimately, you, you're also responsible to make sure that minutes are 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 um, and that minutes are up and things of that nature. But we do have uh, Tara, Tara um, Daryl does our minutes, um, so it's just prod her every once in a while. I would assume. Okay, I will accept. Can we cast one ballot? So. I would like to cast one ballot for uh, Jim Streeter to be the clerk. Jim will be our clerk. An election of assistant treasurer. That's why I look at the last year, so I just wondered. Last year, it was determined it was not. Molly, Molly, what we did on the Rockingham board was we put the clerk and treasurer together because the treasurer is only back up for Kathleen Meathaw if she been by any chance at any time during the year didn't happen to um, be available to sign something. It's, it's not something that really takes any time. And chances are there will be never a time that needs to be. So we could put that together if June didn't mind. <laughs> um. So we're separate, whatever, whatever the board wants. Who would I be the assistant treasurer to? Kathleen Neon. Oh, she, so, so, she's so ours you, as well. So if I think the one time that this became um, somewhat of a critical um, position was um, when our uh, former business manager left abruptly um, and we needed to transfer over things and to try and um, uh, some of the treasurers were out of town. So trying to coordinate that to get signatures to transfer things over to me, um, that was um, just to make sure payroll kept flowing. So, okay, um, I will accept. June Streeter is the assistant treasurer. Usually we only stack the deck, June, if you don't show up to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Appoint voting members to the WNESU board. So for any new board members, we have three members of this board that is part of the WNESU board. And usually we will throw an alternate in there because, you know, if somebody isn't around, um, it's good to, you know, call up and say, hey, can you cover for me tonight? A point of order. We've had the discussion about alternates before, and we have been advised by legal counsel that we cannot appoint alternates. Okay. Um, and I think that that's, I, I want to state clearly that I absolutely believe, believe that appointing an alternate is what we do. However, it appears that we are barred by statute from doing that. And I would encourage um, administration to. Query legal counsel 
again and find out why this is an impossibility. Okay, let me call it an inherent impossibility. Okay. I um I did hear I at the rock I did hear at the Rockingham board that they said that you have to point of order. Um, Mom, no. point of order. Okay. Uh, Robert's rules, which I've got right in front of me, does speak to alternates and does allow alternates. Robert's rules of order is superseded by state statute. When I can find nothing in state statute. statute. And Robert's rules of order, statute prevails. That's why I'm suggesting that we check with council. This board can always come back and appoint an alternate subsequently if in fact all of a sudden we are allowed to do so by statute. But resting a case on Robert's rules, we were uncertain that uh, we would be acting within the law is in my judgment, a poor policy. Yes, the state um, says- um, who, Molly, yeah. you have to rule on the point of order because I refer to it. And I, I looked and I could find nothing in the statute that limited it. So my understanding from listening to David is that this the state says that we cannot have an alternate on our on our books at this point that we have three members. I'm gonna trust that he knows exactly what he's talking about because he's pretty factual. I don't know that without doing some homework. That's what I understand you said, right? I don't see the necessity of a rush to take an action which may contravene statute. I don't think that this board is in any way compromised by taking sufficient time to ascertain from the school's counsel as to whether his opinion in with regard to alternates has changed. Deb? Yes, um, of course. This item 4E is to appoint voting members to the WNESU board. Um, no, it's not speaking to alternates at this point, so that can certainly go on to another agenda for a future meeting if necessary. Um, I would be happy to continue serving on the WNESU board. That was my point. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. So we got Deb on the WNESU board. One other question. Um, do we know who is, who else is on the WNESU from the other boards? Can you ever know that? Um, so on Rockingham, I believe it is Chris Kibbe, um, Priscilla, and Jiggs. Is that correct, Priscilla? Yes. Okay, yes. I'm getting the nod. And then for the UE board, oh, I do apologize. As, as I said, my, my focus was um, not a hundred percent on who was, um, there, but I believe that, um, I believe that Jack Breyer may still be on, um, and then, um, uh, Lynn Morgan. And Meryl Hardy is on there also. I am on for, for Bellis Falls High School. Okay. You have to be appointed. So right now we have Deb, and I really do believe that mm -hmm. it's important that the chairs are on that board because it just helps us with budget um, things. So um, I would like to continue on the issue board if everybody's okay with that. And Brenda has been on it and is raising her hand that she'll do it again. Um, can I just, is everybody good with all that? Wait, are you jumping me? No, 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 <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> You just said that. You just said you and Brenda. So I'm trying to figure it out. We need three, Deb. It's you, me, and Brenda, okay. just like it was okay. last year. Okay, the inclusivity uh, mattered. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I haven't crossed you yet, Deb. I didn't think. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have our voting members of the WNESU board is Deb, Molly, and Brenda. 
and appoint truant officer. Ooh. Mr. Hawes. I, I would um, suggest um, that we um, continue to use Bells Falls PD as a truant officer. Do we need to vote on that? We do. Can I have a motion? I motion that we choose Bellows Falls Police as the truancy officers. I'll second that. <clears throat> motion has been made and seconded to appoint our truant officer as Bellows Falls Police Department. Is there any discussion? I hear none, so we'll go to a vote. Brenda? Aye. Pam? Aye. Priscilla? Aye. Margo? Aye. Deb? Aye. Jason? Yes. June? Aye. David? Yes. Motion passes. The Bellows Falls Police Department is our truant officer. Molly? This is Margo. Did we vote on the um, the board nomination, the WNEST board? I don't think we did. We did not. It's a point. So do we need to vote on appointment inside a board? No, okay. My legal counsel is shaking his head no. <laughs> Thank you. Set time and date. Oh, wait. oh, I'm sorry. Skip, Skip G. One. Yeah. Uh, appoint representatives to the Technical Center's Advisory Council. David, I move we appoint it? David Clark. <laughs> Second. <clears throat> may, may I speak to the motion? Absolutely. The two tech centers. Uh, River Valley Tech Center in the main, most of the kids. We have a few that go down to Brattleboro, don't we, John? Yeah, there's about eight now. I'm getting up in number. Yeah. So Brattleboro this is Margo. I would like to continue with the Brattleboro Tech Center, be that representative. So we have David Clark as a representative for River Valley Tech, correct? And Margo as a representative for its Wyndham. Wyndham, Wyndham Regional Career Center. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Appoint warrant signers. This is so the uh, warrant signers, it's all by the computer now. You used to have to go in and sign. Um, I don't know, Deb, I guess I'm looking maybe for some advice. Um, sometimes I wonder if it isn't better if somebody different looks at them once in a while. Yeah, you know, I, I get, I understand. Yeah, I understand. So um, if you think there's someone else who prefer to do it, I'm, I mean, then you need two. So I don't know who the no, other person was. Who was it? And I don't know as it's not, is it's kicking you off. I always feel confident if you've looked at them, I can, I figure you've fine tooth combed them, but um, I just hate to, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I look at them so many times that I don't know if I, unless something really looks different, I wouldn't catch it maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd be willing to, I'd be willing Molly, to, do, okay. to learn. Molly, okay. um, Molly, you, Deb, and I were last year, um, only so that we had an extra person. So you should have at least three, you should have the three, so you have one person back up. Get it covered, yeah. June, who creates and the warrant? Did Jason say he wanted to do that? Hold on. Who creates the warrants and do you get to see the actual bills that are on the warrants? Right now. So Mar Marlene. Marlene. Um, to payable. Um, does create and, them. Um, and there is a backup to everything. Is that correct, yeah. Deb? Yeah, that's right. There's a so backup. The, you do get to see what, you're not just signing a, a ledger sheet. There is the right. actual okay. piece of that. Right, the actual sheet. Yeah. So there were, these are the line items and their description. David? Well, Molly, I hate to do this twice in the same meeting. I'm going to go back to statute. 
statute says that <clears throat> boards have to be signed by a majority of a board unless mm -hmm. the board designates a different number of signers. So I think that it would be um, politic to um, set a number of signers and then appoint them. <coughs> Thank you. So it's been, Deb and I have been the only ones I've seen sign in quite a while. Um, so if you guys think you need a third person, then we need to. Holly, need to... I just looked at them. I didn't sign any of them because you guys had signed them, is what we did last year. Mm -hmm. June, are you interested in that? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Do, do, do we, we don't okay. currently have a motion on the floor because this is an appointment. Am I correct? Right. Really? Okay. I'm going to offer a motion. And the motion will be that uh, the Union High School Board um, direct the chair to appoint two board members to sign warrants on behalf of the board. Any discussion? I have a little. Um, didn't you just say the majority of the board has to sign the warrant? Yeah. Under statute, the majority has to sign. However, the board can take an action to allow a different number of signers. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor for the Union High School board chair to direct two members to sign the warrants. <clears throat> there doesn't appear to be any discussion. Brenda, how do you vote? So, so am I voting for the people? You're voting that the board chair can direct two people yes. to sign the warrants. Yes. Okay. Pam? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Margo? Yes. Deb? Aye. Jason? Yes. June? Aye. David? Yes. So I would like to direct Priscilla, I'm, I'm sorry, Deb Wright and Jason Terry to be the warrant signers for the Bells Falls Union High School. Thank you. Thank you. Set time, date, and location of regular monthly meetings. <clears throat> we are right now the second and the fourth Monday, right? Mm -hmm. And that has been working with your schedule, Andy, and with all the other meetings. That's where we need to stay. They start at 6 30 at the high school. So I think it's important that we keep the second and the fourth open. It feels like we're having a lot to do and not and kind of rushing it through because we had too much. Um, I would like to settle in to, in, at least until summer, having two meetings and being able to, you know, all these things that we want to throw something in an agenda because we didn't get it done because somebody forgot to do it because, it, you know, we got to have this, I, I would like to see us be way better in having a meeting on the second and the fourth Monday and having agenda items into me by Tuesday. The agendas have been, have been awful and I'll own some of it because, you know, at the last minute, somebody we're trying to do something and, but we gotta, we, we need to do a better job as a board. I need to do a way better job as a chair. You know, you guys trusted me and put me in here again and I wanna see our agendas be ready um, I don't want to see a bunch of adjustments on agendas when we get here. 
We're going to have a meeting every two weeks. And unless it's something earth shattering that you, the administration really needs to get to us, I just think it's important. And just to follow up, sorry, um, we'll be posting on Thursday. So we've set that as our deadline to, to get postings done. Um, yeah, so, we just need to so do if a you better have it by job. Tuesday, yeah, we'll yeah. get it up there. It just always feels like it's just like Thursday night shuffle and it, it right. just, it, it needs, I mean, so I, some of it, I'm, I'm going to own it as far as my part of it, making sure we're doing a way better job than we have been. Mom, can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. I really liked how Mr. Broadley um, sent us, uh, I think it was Friday, like what he was going to talk about. So it kind of gave us time to digest it if you wanted to, instead of the, uh, you know, the five o'clock surprise email, like, right. oh my God, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> and then, um, I wasn't part, so when you're off the WNESU board and you're just on one board, um, we never really got a report from Andy. So I was wondering if we can on, make it a permanent thing on the agenda to have a superintendent <clears throat> report. I, I agree with you. We used to have one, and I don't know how it got pulled off, and that was actually on my list of things. There's a couple of things I'd like to see us do differently than we have been doing, and I don't know why they were off, but... I do think that it's Thank that it's, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it doesn't have to be as full as what you do at the SU, but it, you know, a lot of people watch this meeting and they don't watch the SU meeting, and it's just good to keep you know everything as transparent as it can be. So I would I'm going to try the Friday before the Tuesday that we need the agenda items. Just send you guys out a. And just to remind, if you got something you want on the agenda, throw it at us so that I hopefully have it by Sunday night so that I can get it to the administration and, you know, we can decide, you know, what's going to go on this month, uh, this week, what's going to go on the next week, you know, depending on how much they have to do. But I think we have a lot going on and I, I just want to see us, you know, be able to, you know, entertain what anybody wants and not be not be shuffling wicked hard and not be here till 10 o'clock at night because I don't think we do well at night. At least I don't. Molly? Yes. Um, can I make a suggestion that um, Andy was saying that, you know, they want to post on Thursday. So what I did with Rockingham board is we have to have ours in by Tuesday. Um, that doesn't just give the weekend where people are sometimes busy and not looking at things or thinking about things. But if we had it to you by Tuesday, you would have two days to finalize and get, get it set to go out on Thursday. Would that work? Yep, that's what I started with. I'd like to see it earlier than that, but I got to have them by Tuesday. So that, that's Thank good. You. Okay, es establish the newspaper to be used to announce school board functions and activities. We've always had lively conversation about this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hawes, what is your recommendation? <laughs> um, well, we, we used the reformer um, and then we um, um, So we've also used the Eagle, Eagle Times. Times. Yep, I'm looking that up. And, a lot of people then... don't think they get the reformer well enough. Um, the reformer is um, online now, is that correct? Both online and mm -hmm. yeah, and print. The reformer so. does not print the paper on Fridays or Mondays. There's no newspaper print. It's all digital Friday and Monday. Okay. Uh, does the Eagle? Eagle publishes Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Wow. <laughs> oh, and, and Sunday too. So, um, the recommendation has been the last couple of years we did both papers because. The Eagle didn't get some of the people and the Bradbury Farm yeah. didn't get some of the people and, and with it being online, I don't know how important that is, but. We're, we're also going to use, um, is it the Westminster? That's the monthly, and I apologize. Yes. So Westminster, we're, who's that? We're, we're going to post at least meeting dates um, there so that we, I know we won't be able to get agendas posted, but we're going to, so we're going to try and get them there and we're, and, um, um, you know, we can also just because this board affects all of our communities, um, we can also 
at least get the times posted in the uh, up in Grafton. Um, I apologize for not knowing the paper up there too. But the Grafton the News, and I also suggest the Athenian. The Athenian, yeah, that was brought up too. Okay, thank you. That's a long newspaper. Mm -hmm. It's, it's one email, so it's like a lot of those are just here are our dates coming forward and um Ollie. Yep. And I'd like I'd like you to do the shopper. Um the rock board is doing the shopper. The shopper is distributed um free to all of the all of our constituent areas. It won't be able to get our agenda in there, so we need to note that because that's too close. It's a weekly, but it um by putting the notice out in advance that she can do the notice and also that allows you know any of the activities and that kind of stuff to go in there and it's a reminder that we need to do that so i'd like that added and and our goal is to like i said to put those dates but also then direct them back to our website where they could get the updated or the the agenda yep. so you know in that sense so okay so remember i have yeah. Don't make only comment about the shopper and we use it for the village too is that you have to get stuff in by Friday if you want to make sure it turns up for the next weeks otherwise it's going to be in the week after and it's going to be too late it happens a lot I have the shopper the Bradbury former the eagle the Westminster Gazette Pam can you tell me the two in Grafton again uh, so there's the Grafton news Mm -hmm. And in Athens, they have the Athenian. A T H E N A. E N I A N. I think I can't remember. Yeah, I A I A N. Okay, got it. So, do we need to vote on this? Looks like we do. Can I have a motion to establish the Shopper, the Bradbury Reformer, the Eagle Times, the Westminster Gazette, the Grafton News, and the Athenian as the newspapers that we're going to use to announce school board functions and activities? So moved. Second. <laughs> Is there any more discussion? David? Yes. June? Uh, yes. Jason? Yes. Deb? Yes, I. Margo? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Pam? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we made it through that. Committee assignments, building and grounds for the high school. Uh, that's something I'm kind of passionate about. I'd like to stay on that. Um, anyone else interested in building and grounds? I'd like to stay. Jason. Um, how many do you have on it? How many are you? Oh, let's see what we had. Last year we had Molly, Margo, and Jack, and Jason. I would be interested in that one. My car is taking a wicked hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> is there any, anybody can be on it. I mean, if we're having a building grounds committee meeting for the high school, anybody, anybody can be here. David? Well, I would do a quick count. Uh, Molly, Margo, Jason, and Jack are four people. Uh, committees, is that statute word again, under the statute require um, a majority for a quorum if the committee is going to take action. And it's infinitely less unwieldy if you have a five member uh, committee than a four member committee, because a quorum of a four member committee is the same three as the quorum of a five member committee. So um, if there's four people interested, I would certainly be willing to serve as a fifth wheel, although um, I'm perfectly happy to attend those meetings as a, simply an interested board member. So right now we have Molly, Jason, and June, so that gives us three, and I don't disagree, it's 
a lot easier to get a quorum if we've got, you know, three out of five. Right. Holly, I'm willing to continue on that. This is Margo. Okay. And David, I can put you down. If you need it, if you need to make a uh, five member committee for a three quorum, yes, I would be willing to join that committee. Okay. Is there anyone out there on my screen that is interested in buildings and grounds? We got a lot more on the list, Pam. We'll get you in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to budget and finance. The budget committee is, a, is some work. And um, this is another one of those things that um, I told myself that was, if I was in this seat again, that I was probably Andy was going to get mad at me because, like, on August 13th, I'm going to start asking when our first budget meeting is because it just feels like it's the last few years it's been Christmas Eve and we're still trying to figure out what our budgets are going to be. And that's not the way I was, learned, was taught as a board member. So we're going to try to start them early. Priscilla? I'd like to be on that. Okay. Pam, are you on budget and finance or are we gonna get you somewhere else? I would rather go somewhere else. I'm eyeing. Right. That's okay. Molly, this is Margo. I'll join. Okay. And I would like to be on the budget committee. I I like to keep John on his toes. Yeah. I'll get you done by August. So. <laughs> we'll be ready to go. so that'll give you three on the budget committee. Um, and you and Andy, do you need anything else? You need anybody else? <laughs> and again, anybody can show up. I mean, if there's something going on, you want to learn about it, it's anybody can come to a budget committee meeting. Teacher and support staff negotiations. Molly, Pam. can I can I speak to that? Hold on just a minute. Pam's got her hand up first, so go ahead, Pam. Uh, this is where I want to actually step up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Molly, so Molly, the problem is going to be whether they will accept any new members or not, because the, the rules are that the, the committee not change. And so um, we're at that point. We did finish the teacher ones, and we just have the support ones left to do at this point. So I don't know um, if Pam's interested. We, can, we could ask her you know, them if that's acceptable, but it may not be because they have been very, very firm on, you know, sticking to our rules had. And our superintendent hand up and then David. Um, I, I did speak with the association. Um, the only person that is going to remain on that negotiation team is Kate Kane as the, as the lead. The rest will all be support staff. Um, and I, I, I did mention that there might be some new ones, and she did not seem opposed to that. I, I didn't say that there would be. I just mentioned that it could come I, up. At it I mean, when boards change, I don't see how we can. So, well, just, um, Molly, if I may. The ground rules that Priscilla is speaking about were only for the teachers. New ground rules will have to be set with the support staff um, if... I would prefer I would prefer you guys use the same ground rules and we stick with the new policies now, but that's up to you um, as far as negotiating team goes. But there's no guarantee that the staff that the ground rules will require the same people from the teachers negotiating team. So uh, I just I just knew that that's what our team that we just finished that there's that are already on there we're going by and what we were doing. But under those conditions, Pam, I'm sure. <laughs> We would love to have you on there too. If, if there is room for me to come abo aboard, then I will join. If if not, I can gracefully sit and then maybe occupy my time visiting the budget and finance meetings. And we usually have one one from each board. I'm I am from Rockingham, so 
That's why I was speaking up about it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I knew he was patient, more patient than I am. David, you're next. Well, <clears throat> I think the point's been mooted, but I will make the reminder anyway that at some point in teaching negotiations, the two sides mutually agreed that negotiations would be conducted in public. Mm -hmm. And I'm uncertain as to whether that is still the practice. However, for war, there's absolutely no reason that at the very least, uh, Pam couldn't be, um, what's the word here? Auditing negotiations and then uh, providing input to this board at the very least in executive session. In years past, um, the negotiating committee members have taken direction from their boards as to what the boards wanted them to do. Now, the, the practice has changed over the last few years, and I'm uncertain whether it's changed for the better or for the worse, but certainly in years past, the boards have been uh, supremely well informed about what's going on in negotiations. I will say just uh, this member here has next to no idea whatsoever what's going on in negotiations because it doesn't come up here. Ditto. So if, if Priscilla is the rep for Rockingham, then Pam would be the representative for the high school. Yes. So Pam, yes. you, you would report back to us when you have something going on? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Thank you. Molly, can I speak to that? Because the negotiations were all in open session, um, I think there was less reporting back than there would. Although I know I asked my board for what they wanted me to do and reported back to them constantly. I think Deb was the one at the high school. And I think, I think when it was open session, maybe she didn't quite as much, but I think she also, I remember her asking, you know, at our meeting. Once we went into mediation, which was... Um, we stopped in December, but when we went into mediation, we did two sessions, February 2nd and March 2nd, um, and those have not been reported back yet because of we're right in the process of reorganization. Okay, well, we have got Pam as the high school teacher support staff negotiation. Welcome aboard, Pam. Thank you. CIP team representative it's the continuous improvement plan i volunteers tribute <laughs> sorry it's a literary reference i'm a librarian um i would be happy to step up on a continuous improvement plan if there's room perfect to throw your stuff on the pyre yeah <laughs> So Jason Terry, oh no, you didn't do it. Explain them anyway. What's that? Explain them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So last year we had Margo. Uh, do we need more than one board member on this? No, because a, a lot of it has to do with the, the, the large recovery team that we have going on. Um, and I think Margo, you, you've sat in on that, and, and I don't know if you want to continue on with that. Well, you know, we're, we're definitely been adding members, and some it's large enough that if people can make it, they make it. If they can't, um, so you know, um, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't look to take someone out just because, you know, if Margo wants to continue to join just because she's got the history, and and then we can bring Pam up to speed. That would be great. Okay, is that okay with you, Margo? I don't mean to like stick you with it. Oh, that's great. I, I, I'm i happy to continue and glad that Pamela wants to join too. And just, I wasn't able to make like the last two because of conflicting work meetings. But. And the next, the next one, Andy, you might share is in April, April, April 4th, maybe? Sometime. I'm not sure the date. It's in April. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the audit committee. Mm -hmm. Deb was on it. 
I'd be happy to continue if, if there's no one else who has a burning desire. Oh, um, yeah, that's fine. How much do you do, Deb? <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but no, so what's it's 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 right there, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, what that committee hasn't met for months and months. Well, that's a committee I want to be on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, we, that was a that was a committee that we started because of the craziness of a couple of years ago. I don't okay. even know if we need to continue it. Um, Priscilla, you were on that team, right? So I was. Um, Jigs is on it from our. Uh, from the Rockingham board um, right. for this next year. And I think with everything going on in the business office, it would be good to have a committee to look at the workings and that it wasn't just audit. It, it had another name, a longer name. Yes, it was a business. It was, yeah, it was yes. a business. I can't remember. Now. It was a long name, like five different words. It was yeah. business, business operations, business systems operation and audit committee. So it's pretty long. Oh. You know, I have to go back and look. Um, okay, I mean, so you are, I'm willing to I'm willing to serve with you, but I'm on so hold on. And I'd be at everyone. Deb, you are going to be our representative for the high school for the audit committee. Okay, and can you meet and do anything with any kind of meet? Would you yeah. make sure that we get it on the agenda so you can get us yeah. up to speed? I think since it's been so long, I'd probably start. I'll get you set up a date with the whoever when I find out who all will be on it, um, set up an April meeting sometime. See if we can get ourselves settled. Okay, thank you. Policy committee. Last year was myself, Margo and Brenda and Priscilla. Seems that we shouldn't have a four member, but. I'm on it from Rockingham, so. Oh, you're on it from Rockingham? Is that why we had you? Yeah, I think, well, I think, and if we were doing any um, local ones, we had we had the, long, the bigger one for the for Dust Star Board. I'm willing to be on it for our board, but I'm already on it for the SU. Well, there aren't a lot of policies that have, that the high school has some, but uh -huh. most policies are done out of the SU. Wanna go for a walk? Jason, how would you like to be on the policy committee? I haven't got your name there anymore. <laughs> so I got Molly, Jason, and I need one more for the policy committee for the high school. Who's not here? <laughs> Krista. Krista. There you go. <laughs> David. <laughs> he told me that once. He said, you don't show up. You're getting nominated for everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Brenda is raising her hand. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now we are at Brenda raised her hand. Yep. So I got Molly, Jason, and Brenda. And now we have adopt Robert's rules of small boards. Or small, small. And by, so by doing that, we don't have to have a second. What else does that change? It changes the way um, you do discussions. Um, in lock boards, you can only have two times where they speak and you have to stand. Um, it allows the chair to also be part of discussions. Um, those are the those are the two main things. But actually, um, when I looked it up, because there was this discussion of whether it had to be um, that way adopted for small boards, actually the way you adopt it is um, the, um, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, the latest edition, which includes um, directions for small boards. That way you've got the whole thing. Okay. We have to have a motion for that. Correct? I'd like to offer a motion, like to Madam Chair. Thank you. My motion is that uh, the Fellows Falls Union High School District Number 27 Board operate 
under the current iteration of Robert's Rules of Small Boards. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. um, David said current, and Priscilla said that we should adopt the latest edition. It means the same thing. Same thing. Current same thing. Iteration, latest edition is okay. Latin. I just want to make sure. Will. Okay, Brenda, how do you vote? Oh, loser. Okay, Pam. She's there. Yes. Aye. Priscilla. Aye. Margo. Aye. Evan. Aye. Aye. Uh, Brenda, we're voting on adopting Robert's Rules of Order for a small board. Aye. Yes. June. Aye. David. Aye, uh, yes. Number six. Okay, superintendent update. The, the only real update I had was it's a little, um, but um, it's just on the mask um, and the changes from the AOE. Um, so just prior to uh, winter break, the secretary had um, signaled that um, there might be a change in the um, in, uh, COVID responses and protocols. And so um, just after um, break, um, the AOE um, is rescinding all of their COVID protocols. Um, and so the first one being masks um, and that masks are now, our face coverings are now optional as of today. Um, and so um, in, the, in the interim of, of this time, uh, all of our schools have been meeting and I know the, the school has been meeting, their task force met here, um, talked about um, how to move forward on other plans uh, such as visitors and opening the building. The, the high school has been fairly, I don't want to say operating as normal because that because there's no, more, no, no such thing as normalcy anymore, but, mm -hmm. um, but, but you've been having visitors and, and whatnot. And so it's not such an impact as it is on other buildings. Um, uh, but we had, we had already moved um, in a direction with the, um, with the basketball playoffs to allow um, more than we had normally allowed into. So I think the, the biggest um, change really for the high school is, is the, the fact that masks are now optional. Uh, we are continuing to recommend masks um, for our, um, any visitors inside of our buildings, um, but um, we're not policing it. Um, that also includes buses. Um, and there's been some, some confusion. I've had some emails from folks um, around it because um, TSA and, and some others um, continued their recommendation on public transportation and school buses were originally considered public transportation, but under the new um, guidance, um, they are essentially um, um, saying that school buses are, are no longer a mandate to wear a mask. Um, the other pieces that are being rescinded are the, um, the testing procedures. So um, the specifically test, um, test at home, uh, that, um, that procedure is being uh, sunsetted and um, we're gonna no longer receive supplies for that. And that's for the, the people who are considered a, uh, um, a presumed contact. Um, we were giving out, you know, um, enough tests for people like for a week to, to test and do the antigen tests. Um, so that, that is being sunsetted. And then also the assurance testing, which is for staff um, to do the antigen tests, um, that, that procedure or, or protocol will be sunsetted. Um, and then our nurses will continue to get enough um, uh, tests for diagnostic purposes. So uh, that's kind of where we are. Um, and then just recently, just to update the board, um, there's been a couple of, um, and, and I think John's done a, a great job of making sure that um, people know what's going on. But uh, last week, uh, we had a, uh, a threat called into the school um, a couple of different times in the same day. Um, we went in, uh, John took the building into lockdown as per our, you know, our protocol. 
uh, called uh, the Vermont State Troopers. Uh, they responded, came over. Um, we looked at the threat, considered they deemed it wasn't a credible threat, but just for um, appearances and just want to make sure everything was at ease. They came the next day um, and they were here um, the next day and visible. Um, and then, um, you know, and we're reviewing that we're gonna, um, Wednesday as a, as a whole administrative team because we had some other um, emergencies throughout the district. We're just going to sit down and look at all of our kind of how we're responding to those things just to make sure we're crisp on it. Um, and then today there was a, an incident that occurred not at the school at all. Um, it occurred somewhere else um, in our community um, at one of the uh, mobile home parks um, with a, uh, there was a shooting involved, but I guess somehow over the scanner, Bellows Falls High School came into it. And given the fact that the two are happening so close together, uh, we felt it was important to get a message out um, that we were not affected in any way by it. And uh, we, do, we did double check with Bellows Falls PD, but also with the uh, state police and um, found out that yet that there was no threat to the community and uh, there was no high school student involved or the high school at all, which we also know. So. Good. I missed the course some arguing on Facebook. Uh, new business for discussion. We don't, we don't have any that I'm aware of. Um, so our next, we're going to date our next meeting for the 28th. So the Friday before that, I will try to send you out an email reminder, but um, no, the Friday, Friday before that. We need agenda items the Tuesday before the meeting. So the meeting is on a Monday. And I will send something out. Um, I don't know if I should do this under new business or old business, but um, I think we have a couple new board members and it'd be really nice, even though we're not all sitting at a table, if we all just kind of in, in, you know, introduced ourselves to anybody that's watching. And so everybody here knew who we are. I'm going to start on the screen, Deb. Yes, hi, um, I'm Deb Wright. I'm um, high school for Rocking, <laughs> high school Rockingham. Uh, I'm not sure what else you want. Um, been on the board for a few years and on the SU too. Perfect. Priscilla. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Priscilla Lambert. I'm previous. Uh, teacher, and I've served on the Rockingham board, the high school board, and the SU board for the last three years, um, newly reelected, along with you guys, and um, I'm really looking forward to working with everybody. Margo? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Margo Gia, and I'm a representative for Rockingham. I, like Priscilla, I just started a a new term. I've been on the board for several years and prior to that had been on the Rockingham board. Pam? Hi, I'm Pamela Johnson Spurlock. I live in Grafton and now on the high school board. I have previously served as a Grafton representative for the elementary board and I'm excited to be here and I am an educator in a nearby district. Brenda? I represent Rockingham on the high school board and I've been on the board about four years, I think. Also representing the high school on the WNSU board. Welcome to new members. Jason. Uh, hi, I'm Jason Terry. I'm a uh, father of six. Uh, served on the, uh, this is my second year on the high school board. I have um, uh, two more years. Um, I was on the Rockingham board for a year and a half and uh, Happy to be here. June. Um, my name is June Streeter. I am a mother of six. I am finishing out Ian Spardinelli's one year term. And I am happy to be here. I'm not quite sure what I got myself into, but <laughs> we're going to roll with it. David. My name is David Clark. I represent Westminster on Union High School Board. I had previously served a number of years ago on the Westminster Town School Board. 
like several others here, I've been around for a while. However, my sentence is up in two years and I'm looking forward to it. I am Molly Bannock. I am a representative for the town of Westminster on the high school board and proud to be here. Thank you, everyone. We, we don't do that enough sometimes. Um, I don't think we have any other business. So we're gonna put y'all back on the spot again. Anybody have any director's comments? David? Um, SIP, community, pardon me, continuous improvement plan uh, that has a committee. ESSER has a committee. I think it would be appropriate for those committees, Andy, to report out to the SU board on a regular basis. Um, so that we have an idea of what the work product looks like. Um, of course, at the beginning of this meeting, there was some discussion as to whether we should adjust the agenda and address the question of teacher bonuses. Um, I have a great deal of reluctance to uh, adjust an agenda to discuss what I would believe is a substantive topic without having the public um, have an opportunity to be aware of the discussion and possibly comment on it. And I'm gonna say something very radical here. Most people um, who have been aware of my comments think I am um, absolutely intransigently opposed to those bonuses. I'm not, um, but I have a couple of concerns. One concern is we're using other people's money, uh, in this case, ESSA money, to pay those bonuses. Um, we have lots of ESSA money. There are a lot of districts that don't have lots of ESSA money. And I am concerned about the possibility of setting up a situation where we outbid those districts for teachers. It would certainly be our right to do it, but whether that's um, in uh, the broad sense a good thing to do, I think is something we need to discuss before we do it. That's why item number one. Item number two is that um, we can use ESSA money to pay teacher bonuses. Can we use ESSA money to pay bonuses to paras who dollar for dollar would value the ESSA money a lot more highly than teachers would because uh, paras make a lot less than teachers do and in many cases are carrying as heavy and in some instances even heavier burdens than the teachers are. For that matter, and this is pointed out to me earlier today by another board member, what about the custodians who have to clean up after us? Um, certainly those people were essential workers um, during the early stages of COVID when we would shut the schools down on Wednesday to do a deep cleaning. Um, are we going to recognize those contributions uh, the same way we're proposing to recognize teacher contributions? I think these are some uh, discussion points that the board should be talking about before we start throwing money at teachers without having a public discussion about it. I have one other slight item, and that is it is my belief that the Wyndham Northeast Supervisory Union Board uh, acted improperly when they moved teacher bonuses. Um, we have a squirrely situation with the WNESU board. It's a nine member board, except when it isn't. And those board uh, memberships are for the benefit of anyone uh, who doesn't have a complete handle on it, like me. You have Union Elementary, which is the Union of Athens, Grafton, and Westminster. You have Rockingham District. You have Union High School District 27, which is this board, which is meeting right now. Each of these boards have three voting members, but here's where it gets squirrely. And where it gets squirrely is because on July 1st, 2022, Westminster once again will become an independent school district with its own board of control, its own passing authority, it becomes its own unique, unique municipality, just like the other three boards. And um, here's the rub. It is my understanding, and perhaps we need guidance from council on this once again, that Westminster 
um, is a voting member currently of the WNESU board, which would indicate a 12 member board uh, with a seven member quorum um, when acting on items which will concern Westminster. When uh, the supervisory union board uh, elected, if you will, to award those bonuses to teachers and prospective teachers, half of it was to be paid uh, in the current fiscal year and half of it in the next fiscal year. Very certainly, uh, any payments which are made in the next fiscal year affect Westminster Board. However, when that motion was taken after the Union High School Board held its annual meeting, there were only five people at the table. That is not a seven member quorum as I believe would have been required to legitimately take action on those bonuses. So I am raising the question now so that when the SU board reorganizes, they can answer it. Was that in fact a proper quorum that took action and committed Westminster um, in a situation where Westminster's voice at the table uh, was not heard? Thank you, Molly. You're welcome, thank you. June. Um, all I wanted to ask was we got a bunch of emails today with the audit and the comparison budget versus actual report. Um, are those gonna be on the next agenda or when do we discuss those? So we will have on the next agenda that we will have the finance um, director. Is that what we're calling him right now? Yeah, I can. I, yeah, I can ask. I can ask um, Glenn and Casey. There, there are consultants that we're working with to come and speak on it. I just received those today, so, or you know, and so I wanted to pass them on um, because um, I might forget at some point they get lost in my emails, and so I wanted you guys to at least have the draft of them. The Cognos report, which is the actuals, the budget versus actual, yeah. is is automatically generated every two weeks, and then is and so it's mailed out. It's emailed out to principals and board members just uh, okay. so they have that. That's so. the one that I had a lot of questions on. Yeah. So, okay, thank and, you. And that's what our, sorry, I'm speaking during the director's time. <laughs> I mean, just to clear it <laughs> up. But no, um, that, that is what our business office has been working um, tirelessly on to try and get is, is um, the, the budget had not been built into e-finance. And, so okay. that's and that comes in. every month? comes every two weeks okay. and, it, and it hasn't been coming originally because um, we were still working on cleaning things up. Um, and so they felt that we had gotten to a point where we could maybe push that out. And so there are some errors in it still, but it's still, it's in a better shape. And the audit, um, we'll discuss that as well because I had some questions about the, that as well. Thank you, that's all I have. Jason. Thank you, Molly, I'd like to, Welcome June and, and Pamela to the board. I look forward to working with both of you ladies. Um, I, I'd like to just say uh, you know, a couple of things. You know, I'm happy to see that we have an American flag in this room. You know, I, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm, I really believe in our country and I think we can do great things here in our country. And uh, as, a, as a nation, we can't, can't give up on that. And I'm um, really happy to see, you know, my kids, you know, wake up this morning and I didn't have to go wake them up. They were up and ready to go to school because they were excited to come to school without having to put a mask on today. Um, and everyone here seems that the, the atmosphere seems different. Um, and, you know, and, and I don't want to brush over the fact that people have died from COVID and it's a terrible thing, but I am not a fan of masking. Um, and I'm, I'm just not a fan of the, the current mask that we had. You know, if, if the N95 was the best, why weren't we wearing that at all times? And, you know, to watch my son play basketball for two years in a mask, um, you know, I, I know I'm out of shape, but barely can walk up a flight of stairs with a mask on, you know, but, you know, for, for athletes to 
have to play a sport in a mask because they love the sport. And what we, we've done to kids over the last two years, in my mind is, um, yeah, I don't like being part of that. And I always want to, and I'm very, and I'm very forward thinking and I want to fix things immediately and kind of move on. That's kind of how I try to do things. So when, when we're doing a buildings and ground thing and we're talking about HVAC and eventing and we're almost two years into this and we're still not even started, you know, that's, that gets to me a little bit. And, you know, we have a parking lot outside that is in desperate need of repair. We have a lot of things we have to do here. And again, I want to be very forward thinking and I don't want to fix things just for today. I want to fix things for 60 years from now so that we leave this earth in a better place than what it is now. So you know, I apologize to the kids that had to suffer through the masking. I guarantee that, well, I don't want to guarantee, but I, I, I'd be willing to bet a lot of them did not like it, but they all did what they needed to do. And I commend all the kids and I'll always fight for the kids. So, thank you. Deb Wright. Can't hear you, Deb. I realize I made it. Um, thank you and welcome to the new members on our board who are willing to, to jump in. Hope you're wearing waiters um, because it can get deep. Um, I would like, you know, moving forward, this is my last year of my term. Um, and I would like to see okay. us make severe course corrections, um, improving the clarity and transparency of what once was going on, on the board um, with all the things that we have seen um, in the last couple of years. And I'm not talking about COVID. Um, it, I'm talking about the things that involve the audits and all those albums. And those of you who are aware, well aware of it understand what I'm talking about. Um, I want to continue to see transparency and then we move forward and our agendas are cleaner, clearer, like Molly's saying, she needs to have the stuff um, at a certain time in order to make sure it gets on the agenda. Otherwise, we are not providing the best um, information to the community in order for them to be involved. And I want to make sure that they do stay involved. That's why there are so many hybrid meetings and why negotiations were open um, to create a level of transparency so that everyone could, see, everyone could see how we did our job. And that should continue because I think it keeps everybody on the up and up and nobody has any fights. And it's, a clean, it's a clean fight. You don't have to take the gloves off. And uh, in any case, that's it. And I'm looking forward to a, a great new year. Thanks. Priscilla. I, yes, it is too bad that we did not add the MOU onto there for discussion since there were some misrepresentations that have been put out. Um, every employee in our district, it's not a teacher bonus. It is a retention and bonus for and new, new hire for everybody in our district that is janitors that is um support staff that is um uh everybody in our um uh lunchrooms every, it's everybody except andy has turned it down for him but but it is everybody else uh so i wanted to make that clear and we did have counsel as to the um su vote of five out of nine and um he clearly said that it was a legal vote. So I want that out there because I know we have the newspaper representatives here and I don't want wrong information going into the paper as a result of that. So I look forward to getting that done. This is the last board that will be taking up that issue and whether we need a special meeting to do it right away um, because we are the last board or um, we can wait two weeks. That's a long time to wait for to get it started. Also, I wanted to comment on the fact that although we've taken the masks off and it is optional and granted, you know, it is time to do that as some of our members have said, but keep in mind that we do have some parents and some students 
that are really nervous about taking it off. So we have to be uh, aware of them. We have to be considerate of them and realize where they're coming from, just like we had to be aware of the ones back when we were putting them on that wanted it so desperately to get it on at that time. And we had to be aware of both sides at that time. We also need to be aware now and be considerate. And being considerate of everybody is the bottom line because that is what will get us there. So be kind and considerate. Thank you. Oh, and also, yes, at some point we do need a retreat so as to go over you know, what's expected of board members and how to interact and all of the rules. So I push for that too. Be kind and considerate. Thanks. Pam, you're next. Well, hello. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's kind of dusting off a little bit and getting my feet wet. So yes, I, I will bring my waiters. Um, thanks, Deb. <laughs> Um, but I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to learning more about this board and how I can best serve um, this board and um, my community. Thank you. Brenda. Yes, um, I don't personally know everybody that's on the board, but welcome to the new members. And we have a great community that we're serving and um, in a great high school. And so it's an honor to be on the board. Looking forward to the new year. and very happy to see everybody's faces glad about the mask and uh, and yes moving forward with consideration i see that also and thanks i'm it welcome pam and june to our board hmm? oh i miss margo i'm sorry margo you're first okay <laughs> um so I, I just appreciate all of the comments that uh, board members have been sharing, and it's great to have so many different views and be able to work together with so many people. I um, This is not the year, I think, as we close out 2022, but as we start the new school year, maybe in a quote, I'm going to put this in quotes, a new normal. I would love to see the board go back to being able to entertain um, presentations from various high school departments. I felt like that was a really valuable um, way for us board members to learn and be able to participate in the processes of the school and understand what was going on within the building and hear from teachers directly about their departments and what their goals and desires were. So maybe for us to consider come the new school year. Um, so that's it for now, thanks. Thank you. The, the one thing that I would like, all oh, those are good things too, is we always used to have some students that would come, watch us, you know, learn what the process was, um, maybe reported of a, of a committee that they were a member of and maybe the last time we did it <clears throat> excuse me we had them at the end of the meeting so maybe that was the bad part because they didn't want to sit here all night a bunch of old fogies but i'd love to see some kids get involved the date of the next meeting is march 28th at 6 30. I'd like to call this meeting again.